I am at the SeaTac Airport. I have made it to my gate a couple hours early, which is pretty amazing for me. And while I have Wi-Fi, I can do this screen capturing, so I wanted to take a minute to record a quick video. Students in my physical geography class will find this video particularly relevant because we're doing an assignment about this exact, uh, using this website I'm about to show everyone. But students in my intro to geography class will also find it useful and interesting, I hope, because it's about some of the concepts we're studying, including climate and climate change. So without further ado, I'll get my big head out of the way here. And I'll stay down here in the corner. By the way, I hope that the, the background noise here is really, really quite loud and distracting to me. So I hope I don't let it distract me too much or stumble too much over my words. I hope you can hear me clearly, but regardless, I've added captions to this video so you can follow along even if my voice isn't distinct. So we've got the earth.nullschool.net website up here, which shows geostrophic winds and surface winds and ocean currents, a whole ton of information available here. And what I want to show you today as I'm flying to Japan is to show you some of the global circulation that is responsible for Japan's fairly unique climate. And the reason that Japan's climate is unique more specifically. When I say it has a fairly unique climate, what I mean is that there's a lot of regions in Honshu, which is here the main island of Japan and up into Hokkaido in particular, the northernmost island of Japan, that experience a climate that is best classified as continental. Now, if you've done your reading and you've thought about what a continental climate means, that seems pretty paradoxical because of course Japan is an island. And that's what we want to get into today, what we want to explain. What I want to show you here is these winds coming off the vast North Asian landmass, including out of Siberia, coming down to the southeast and crossing over Hokkaido here, as well as crossing over northern Honshu. Those winds are coming off the largest landmass in Earth, Siberia in particular, but also Mongolia and northern China, so all of the Asian interior landmass, which of course, as a very large continent, has a very continental climate and has extremely cold temperatures in winter. So the high pressure resulting from that cold, cold air pooling in the interior of the continent then drains out over the landmass and usually comes across the Sea of Japan in the winter here, which then creates a much colder than we would expect climate for northern Japan in particular. It's cold enough that it usually gets below freezing for a couple months of winter, which is a definition of a continental climate, one of the def parts of the definition of continental climate. And that's why we see this interesting climate in a in an island location where we wouldn't expect a continental climate. In the summertime, that landmass heats up and we don't see this cold wind coming off the landmass. So the Japanese archipelago gets quite warm in the summer, which is the other characteristic of a continental climate. It's not cold year round, it's cold in winter and then warm in summer and humid year round in this case because of the ocean surrounding it. However, what we're seeing I'm sorry, the crosstalk here with the speaker is really messing me up. I'm going to wait a minute. What we're seeing this winter is Japan's actually experiencing its worst winter in decades, its worst winter on record in some ski areas. Some ski areas have not opened or they were open for a little while and they're closed again because there's not enough snow. Most ski areas in Japan depend on natural snow. They don't make snow because it's such a consistent phenomenon, this wind coming out of northern Asia and across the Sea of Japan and then pounding the islands. There's an orographic precipitation effect there. So as that cold air comes across the Sea of Japan, it's warmed slightly, but still stays cold, but it, it, it absorbs a lot of moisture from the sea. And then as soon as it hits the mountains of Western Japan, especially Western Hokkaido and Western uh, Honshu, these two islands in the north, uh, it hits those mountains, it's forced to rise and cool, and then there's usually an abundant precipitation as a result. This year, because it's warmer than usual, more of that precipitation has been falling as rain and not snow, and so we're seeing a different 
result than what we usually expect, which is tons and tons and tons of snow. So a little more detail on this, and what I want to show you all with this visualization, by the way, for those of you who are in physical geography with me, you should note here that there is this swirling vortex here. It's rotating in the northern hemisphere in a counterclockwise direction, and it's moving towards the inside. So that's a classic low pressure system over the North, North Pacific. Uh, there's another one circling right here. So each of these are low pressure systems. We associate that with converging air and rising air and therefore stormy, uh, stormy rainy or snowy weather. Uh, there's not that many low pressure systems going across the North Pacific today, but two of them pretty well developed uh, is, a, is a pretty typical result for the middle of the winter in the Pacific. Moving on, what I wanted to show you here is the way this is set up and the reason what's driving this, this different than usual uh, weather phenomenon. First thing I want to do is look at ocean temperatures, if I can. I don't know that I can. I can look at currents and waves. I'm going to go back to air. What I want to show you is... I guess this, this is a really cool website that doesn't have ocean temperature easily available anyway. I'm going to go back to air. So this is the, sur the surface winds modeled on this. And what I want to show you then is the 500 millibar height. So depending on where this millibar, um, where this, uh, what the atmospheric pressure is doing, the 500 millibar height is somewhere around um, 17 to 20,000 feet ballpark. And click on this again and get, um, sorry, I got to minimize this. And what I want to show you here is that there's a, a, a different than usual phenomenon with re respect to the jet stream. So at the 500 millibar height, we have a really good visualization of the jet stream here. The, the purple colors, the violet and purple colors. I'm going to pause again for this announcement. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's deafening in my ears. So this, you can see the really high speed winds moving here. This is the jet stream, uh, the subpolar jet stream. And normally the jet stream moves right across Northern Asia and then oftentimes bends and dips down a little bit here like we see. Uh, but what we see here is there's a different arm of this and there's high speed winds coming down across South Asia, across Southeast Asia, and then moving up here just north of the Philippines. And there's a bunch of warm water down here, relatively warm water. It's creating relatively warm air. And that's moving up here and mixing. And so the ski resorts in central Honshu and even northern Honshu are experiencing this mixing of warmer than usual air with the jet stream. And that's bringing in warmer air masses than we would normally expect for this time of year. And that's been set up pretty much for the last month, month and a half which has meant that there's been more rain and less snow than we'd expect resulting in this terrible, terrible season. Now, I promised at the beginning that I was gonna talk about climate change a little bit. One of the things that happens whenever there's a cold snap is that climate deniers, climate change deniers or climate change skeptics will frequently say, look, global warming, ha ha ha, in a sarcastic voice. I'm gonna wait for this announcement again. Pardon me. And so people who don't, don't tend to believe in the scientific consensus that the climate is changing and that humans are causing it will be really sarcastic every time there's a cold snap or it snows someplace or even there's a big snowstorm like we've had in the Pacific Northwest this year um, all the way across um, into, into Montana and uh, as far down south as uh, sort of southern Washington in some, some regions. And so a little bit of a cold snap comes in and people start saying, aha, it's proof that global warming is not, not um, happening. Now, of course, we know that's not the case because we still do have cold weather even when on a warming planet. But we have to be careful because so too, when we see something like a really warmer than usual winter in a place like Japan, uh, people who want to point the finger at climate change are quick to do so and arguably a little too fast to do so because it's just one season and just one place. Now, there has been a really slow start to winter across the west coast of the U.S. as well, but that again has more to do with the location of the jet stream than uh, anything particularly about warm 
uh, warmer than usual climatic conditions. It's about where the jet stream has been hitting or missing. But, and this is a really big point to, to, to heed when we talk about the effects of climate change on the global climate system, we do want to take this as a data point, this warmer than usual season for Japan, which has had traditionally year in, year out, really consistent, massive dumps of snow, now not seeing that. If this continues, if we see this maybe not next year, but in a few years and then a few years again, and it starts becoming something that happens every few years, then we start saying maybe there's something we can attribute to a systemic change here. It's not just a fluke one-off event. There's something changing in the pattern. The way we do that in climate science is we have what we call climate normals, which is average temperature and precipitation data across 30 years of historic record. And it, one year won't change climate normals very much. But if you start talking about three, six, nine, 12 years that are warmer than usual, winters that are warmer than usual in particular, then we can start seeing the climate normals affected. And that's what we call climate change. We don't call one warm winter in one place climate change. We call a changing climate climate change. So we need to see that trend. So I'm heading to this part of Honshu. If the snow is awful and I want to explore more geography, I'm gonna head up north to this part here. But uh, I'm just gonna see what we can see and observe what there is to observe in terms of snowfall and snowpack. And uh, I hope I can visit a few ski areas that are open so I can ski a little while I'm there. But regardless, I'm gonna uh, observe a lot of the, the physical and human geography along the way. I hope that was informative and you learned about this cool tool at earth.nullschool.net. I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye for now.